In this video, we're going to create four different roof types. We're going to start with a hip roof. We're going to create a gable roof. We're then going to move on and create a shed roof. And we're going to end with our barrel roof. The first thing we want to do is just come up and lay out some perimeter walls to explore our roof tool with. So we're just going to use our architectural walls. And I'm going to click the drop down and I'm just going to use this exterior brick on metal stud wall. And I'm just going to come over to the draw mode and use the rectangle. And we're going to connect these walls up to level two. So let's just sketch them in. And I'm going to give myself four perimeter wall examples that we can use for the four roof types that we're going to do here in this video. So there we have that. Now we can get started with the actual roof tool. I do want to come into an elevation view, so we'll just take our south elevation for example. And I want to select my level lines. Let me zoom in a little bit, but I'm going to grab them and extend them out beyond the elevations here in both directions. All right. And then let's give ourselves a 20 foot floor to floor height. And I'm actually going to select on this level too, right here. And let's rename this to roof. So this is going to be the level that we will build our roof types at. Yes, we'll go ahead and rename the corresponding views in our browser. All right. So let's go back to our roof view. And now we're going to come up to architectural tab, come down to our roof tool, and we're going to click the drop down. Just coming down to roof by footprint to start. On this first example, we're going to actually explore our, a hip roof. So I want to pay attention to my options bar. We have defined slope as an option, which we will leave checked for the hip roof and an overhang, which we're going to come in and specify. We'll give ourselves one foot and extend into wall core. We're going to leave that alone right now. And then I want us to come down to the draw mode and we're going to select pick walls. And you'll see that as I hover over the walls now, Revit actually gives me a dotted line that becomes the indicator of which side you'll see as I hover on one side of the wall or not. It gives me an indicator line of where this roof sketch line would be created at. So we're going to keep that on the exterior of our wall, that one foot overhang. And I'm going to select here. You'll see Revit's giving me a 912 pitch, which is by default, and we'll leave it that way. And we're just going to select the rest of our exterior walls for this first example, because that will give us a hip roof when this roof is actually sloping in all four directions. So I'm just going to click OK for that. I need to make one more edit to this roof view. Let's come on into our properties. Right now we're cutting through our roof as you can see. I just want to come on our properties and we're going to come make sure that we come down on our extents category to the view range and I want to edit that. For the cut height I'm just going to set it to 30 feet and for the top I want to make it unlimited so that this can truly be a roof plan view and we'll click OK. Now we can see that hip roof in its entirety. So that's the hip roof. Let's move on to our next example. I'm just going to come right back up to the architectural tab in our roof by footprint tool one more time. And then for the second example, we're going to do a gable roof. So the defined slope, I'm going to leave checked originally. And now we need to pay closer attention to when we in fact use defined slope with the gable roof. Understanding that the lines that we select with defined slope actually become a hinge point. So if I want this roof to in fact slope upwards in this direction and back down you know about the center point then I'm going to give myself a defined slope on this edge as well as this edge but if this is going to be a gable roof then we don't in fact have a slope in our north or south direction so I'm going to uncheck defined slope and then create my sketch line about those surfaces and then we're going to click OK and have a look at this. 
and now you can see the layout of our roof plan for a gable roof. Okay, now with our third example, we're going to take a look at a shed style roof. So we're still back up to roof by footprint. I'm going to check my defined slope. And for the overhang, we're going to leave that one foot still once again. And if I want this to slope upwards in this east direction, then I'm just going to make sure that I define slope for this edge. However, there is no slope in the other edges. This would be the only hinge point. So I'm going to uncheck the fine slope and come back in here and give ourselves the other three sketch lines that we need for this rectangular roof type. And then we're going to be able to click OK. Right now, if I select this roof and come over to my properties menu, you'll see that we're the slope is currently a 912, which is going to be kind of high, but I'm going to just bring it down a little bit and we can modify it, you see, after we've even created that roof type. I'm just going to type in 5 for a 512 pitch and you'll see that modification take place. For the last roof type that we're going to create, we need to do a little bit more to work with our roof by extrusion. So the first thing I want us to do up on our architectural tab, we're going to come all the way down to work plane. And I'm going to click on this reference plane to create one. And I'm just going to select along the south edge. And I'm going to draw myself a reference plane here for the barrel style roof that we're going to create for the last example. Now that I've sketched that roof plane in, I want to select it come over here to properties and I'm just going to type in extrusion for this and click apply and you'll see that name comes up being able to use work planes is important here in Revit and we'll get into that in some other videos but here we're going to need one for the extrusion roof type that we're using and I'm just naming it based on what I intend you know to use this roof this reference plane for the next thing I want to do is I'm actually just going to select on my south elevation. And now that we're in this, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the other roof types that we've already created. But the next thing, we're, we're still going to come back up to architectural and we want to set our work plane. And for the name, you'll see reference plane extrusion shows up. And I'm going to click OK for that. You'll see how Revit gives us kind of an outline representing that work plane that we just created. I'm going to click OK. And now we're prepared to get started with the last roof type. So back up to roof. This time we'll use roof by extrusion. We're going to associate it still with that roof level. And click OK. Now we're back in a sketch mode, but for the extrusion. The difference between the roof by extrusion and the roof by footprint when we're in our sketch mode is very important to understand. With the roof by footprint, Revit requires that all of our sketches be a closed loop. However, for the extrusion, it's going to just be an open, not closed piece of sketch work. So let's just use our arc, which we said we we're going to do a barrel vault. I'm going to select the arc. And I'm going to select my origin and I'm going to select the endpoint and then I'm just going to come up to that center point of the arc now the extrusion that we're going to get is going to be based on the roof type that we have selected when we when we select this green check mark to continue so you'll see right now it's selected on a 12 inch if I select that now we will get it we'll get a 12 inch roof extruded so let's go ahead and do that now you can see the roof type that we have here and I'm going to just give ourselves a 3d view to take a look at this and you can see our barrel vault roof extruded let's come back to this roof plan if we need to modify the extrusion you see I can click on it and if I wanted to get that one foot overhang for example so that it lines up with the other roof types. I'm able to do that just by clicking and grabbing my extents. 
the last thing that we want to look at is if I go back to this 3D view that we have now, you'll see that our walls actually do not attach to these roof types right now. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to go through each of these roof types and I'm going to actually tab through and as I tab through Revit's going to select all four of these perimeter walls because they are connected. So I want to select all four of them and then I'm going to come up to my contextual ribbon and you'll see this attach top base and I'm going to select that and then we're going to select the bare fault roof and you'll see that Revit will actually extend all of the tops of our walls to meet the roof. So let's repeat that for these other roof types that we have here as well. Remember I'm tabbing through to select all four of them since they're attached and attaching to top, selecting the roof type attach to top, select the roof type attach to top and select our roof type. I hope this video has been helpful for you. What we've been able to do is create the four roof types. We've started with a hip roof which needed us to define slope on all four edges. We then created a gable roof where we've just defined slope on the east and west edges. We created a shed roof where we had just one hinge point so only one of the sketch lines to our rectangular shape had a sketch with that I had defined slope checked. And then our barrel vault which we needed to create a reference plane and use roof by extrusion. If you have found the demonstration here today on the Smarter Architect YouTube channel to be helpful for you, please subscribe. It takes a second and I would greatly appreciate it.